Hello everyone, welcome back to the program. Over the past year, we've witnessed a seismic shift in transatlantic relations. Britain's on the way out of the European Union. The United States elected a president who seems less willing than his predecessors to intervene overseas. There's been talk of NATO being obsolete and even a U.S. withdrawal from the alliance. European leaders are now saying the fate of Europe is in their own hands. They can no longer depend on Britain or the United States. On today's program, we're going to look at the transatlantic relationship, specifically NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Your Bible actually says that that alliance will soon break apart. The Trumpet Daily. We've offered this booklet before on this, uh, this program. He was right. This is uh, Remembering Five Decades of Accurate Forecasting by Herbert W. Armstrong, pictured there on the cover. Also today, we're going to be offering the Holy Roman Empire in prophecy. All this ties right in with what we're going to be talking about today. One third of your Bible is devoted to prophecy, and most of it is specifically for our time today. Think of it. Think of all of these world empires down through history. 2,600 years ago, and even before then, the Bible foretold the rise and fall of great world empires like Persia or Greece or the Roman Empire, and all of it. All of that prophecy talking about empires before those empires even existed. The Bible foretold the astonishing rise to power of the great British Empire. And of course, the United States as the single greatest superpower in Earth's history. Few people realize this, I know. But your Bible has a lot to say about the present conditions of the world today. And it tells us, it tells us where all of this is leading. If you think about the, the ministry of Jesus Christ and the gospel message that he proclaimed, that whole message revolved around prophecy. He came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the, the future kingdom of God, telling his disciples what would happen in the latter days. Read the first few verses of Matthew 24 sometime. Or look at the apostles uh, Peter, Paul, Jude, and James, look at what they wrote. Look at what they wrote about end-time events, events that would culminate in the return of Jesus Christ. And then how about the last book of the Bible, the Apostle John, writing the book of Revelation, the prophecy of all prophecies. Now you look at the world today, look at all of the troubles, and given what's happening, in the world today. Isn't it about time that we pay attention? Pay attention to this book and look into this book and see what this book, God's inspired word, has to say about our world today. We're going to start in Revelation chapter 1. Make sure that you get your Bible so that you can read along with me and check up on what I'm saying and see what your Bible has to say about world events current events, Bible prophecies. This is Revelation 1 and verse 3. It says, Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy, John says, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. God says that you'll be blessed if you look into the words of this prophecy. You'll understand, you'll know what's coming. You'll be prepared. Now you have to really stand up against the flow of this world because there's so many that, that, that scoff at the prophecies of God. But if you're willing to humble yourself before God and look into these precious words, God will open your eyes to the truth. And we've talked about this, this He Was Right booklet really does chronicle all of these, these major prophecies that Herbert Armstrong talked about over the course of his 50 plus years of ministry, 50 plus years of serving God during the 20th century. He saw so much. He talked about so much and, and so much of what he prophesied. It's now happening. It's now coming to pass. 
There's quite a few examples of that in that wonderful book. Let me just take you to a quote from um, Mr. Armstrong's old correspondence course. These are just a few examples. This is from 1965. He said, prophecy, prophecy reveals that the German nation is to unite in a political and military as well as an economic and religious union with nine other European nations to form the last revival of the church-dominated Holy Roman Empire, though prophecy does not specifically name all of the ten. So he didn't specifically list off the ten. Your Bible doesn't specifically mention them by name. But he did talk about the ten mentioned in Revelation 17 and Daniel 2. We've talked about this so often on this very program. But notice there that he talks about the German nation uniting with nine others. And of course, for that to even happen, Germany itself had to unite. Keep in mind, Mr. Armstrong wrote what you just read there in 1965. Of course, Germany wouldn't unite until 1989. And now you look at the union of nations today in Europe. Of course, there's more than 10, but that will soon change. You wait. You wait and watch, as Jesus said in Luke 21. Watch and pray. You can know what's coming. You can know where Europe is headed. Or other regions. We'll focus more, as I say, on that transatlantic relationship. And I'll come to that in just a second. But a few more examples. This is from 1980. Mr. Armstrong says, it now looks entirely feasible that, that Yugoslavia may be included in this revived Roman Empire. Also, the Pope's native Poland and Romania and possibly Hungary. Now, this was nine, nine years before the Berlin Wall fell. That's when he wrote that, 1980. And that's him prophesying that those uh, Soviet satellite nations in Eastern Europe, that they'd swing over into the European Union. There would be five from the West and five from the East. So that's Herbert Armstrong saying. We talked about Germany uniting. That's Herbert Armstrong saying that that big iron curtain would come down. And five from the East would join in this ten nation combine. Another one here. This is from 1956. The Germans are coming back from the, from the destruction of World War II in breathtaking manner. Germany is the economic and military heart of Europe. Probably Germany will lead and dominate the coming United States of Europe, but, but Britain, it says, will be no part of it. How about that? That's from uh, 1956. That's Herbert Armstrong saying that Britain would not be part of that European Union that United States of Europe, that's him saying it would happen 60 years before it happened. Now, of course, I mean, it's in the process of happening with Brexit last year and now the negotiations that are underway for Britain's departure, for the divorce from the European Union. Now, if you look at those examples that I just gave to you, that's a pretty good track record. It's like it says in the subhead here, in this He Was Right booklet, remembering five decades of accurate forecasting. What a track record. Now, let me take you on further to another one. It says here, this is from 1981, the restored Roman system will radically change big power relations. It says NATO, as it presently exists, would be finished. So here we are now talking about the NATO alliance. And because of this prophecy regarding the seventh and final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire in Europe, that's the Plain Truth magazine, that's Mr. Armstrong's magazine, the one he started in 1934. That's Herbert Armstrong talking about NATO being finished because of these great prophecies of God. Now again, you may have been one that would question that or say, well, that's impossible 5, 10, 15 years ago. But look at what's happening today. If you've been watching the news, you know, and if you haven't, I'll get into some of that uh, by the end of the program. But one more, uh, one more quote, this one is actually from, or it's in the He Was Right booklet. And uh, we say here, who would have thought after the savagery of World War II that America and Germany would become allies? Yet soon after the smoke 
from that massive conflict, conflict cleared, Washington and Bonn laid the foundation for a, a close partnership. The United States established the Marshall Plan to rebuild Western Europe, especially Germany, and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was launched, binding Europe and North America into a military alliance. Now notice this, it says, Biblical prophecy shows that this union was destined from the beginning to end in ruin. That's what your Bible shows. That's what prophecy says. It says the fraying of the transatlantic relationship we see today is the advancement of this inevitable ruin. That, as I say, is a quote that you can find in this, this wonderful booklet. He was right, remembering five decades of accurate forecasting. That's what this booklet is about. If you don't have it in your library yet, Make sure that you contact our operators today and request a free copy. There's no cost. Everything we offer on this program is sent free of charge. There's no follow-up even, if you'd prefer it to be that way. We just want you to have this, this material. We want you to study your Bible. Let's get into the Bible. Let's notice what it says now in Revelation 17, this prophecy, as I say, that we've covered quite often on this, uh, this program. Here in Revelation 17, it describes uh, the final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire, this, this union, this unholy union of church and, and state. Notice how it's described in, in verse 3. So, he carried me away in the, will, in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads, it says, and ten horns, so you can look at other prophecies or other scriptures that, that talk about a woman being a type of the church. That's the, the symbolism here. This, this great false church straddling this, this beast power, this political beast. It's, it's a church-state union. And you can look at the history. You can look down through the last 1,500 years or so of European history and see when these, these seven heads or these seven resurrections emerged, or at least six of them, we're seeing the, the, the seventh take place before our eyes. Seven successive uh, resurrections of this Holy Roman Empire, and that's why we wanted to offer this book today, The Holy Roman Empire in Prophecy. There's one more resurrection. It's happening. It's the, it's the final one, as my father wrote about in uh, the last issue of the Trumpet Magazine, this particular issue here is the latest, the newest issue, hot off the presses. If you don't subscribe to this magazine, you should be subscribing to it. Of course, you can go to thetrumpet.com and read much of this material on our website, but uh, we'd also like to send you a, a free one-year subscription to the Trumpet Magazine so that it comes right into your mailbox and so that you can read about these prophecies and get God's perspective on the news, on world events. Carrying on in uh, Revelation 17, it says in verse 7, And the angel said to me, Where, Wherefore did you marvel? I will tell you uh, the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. And most of the world just marvels at these, these prophe prophecies. They don't understand the meaning. God says, Look, I'll show you. I'll show you the meaning. This beast power, it, it talks about in verse 8, it, it ascends out of the bottomless pit. It, it, it comes up from underground, you could say. It reemerges again, this time for the seventh and final time. Verse 10 says, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. I've explained before how that, that uh, really the understanding on this passage was opened up to Herbert Armstrong uh, back in the 1930s and 40s. He lived during the sixth head, the sixth resurrection. That, uh, that uh, Axis power led by Hitler back in uh, the 1940s. He was alive during that time, Herbert Armstrong was. He saw it, and then there was one more to come. That's the way, I mean, you talk about God getting very specific he does get specific. We know what time period we're living in. If we just let the Bible interpret itself, if we just study these prophecies, 
that Mr. Armstrong expounded upon for decades. He was right. I just gave you several examples right there on the board. Notice further, it says in verse 12, And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings, one hour with the beast. And so that specifically refers to the United States of Europe, that's where Mr. Armstrong got those 10 kings or 10 nations coming together under a United States of Europe. In Daniel 2, they're talked about as being 10 toes, so 10 heads of state. I mean, there's going to be some, some downsizing, but we're seeing that happen even now with Brexit. So it'll happen again, and it'll come down to that core, that core union. And it says in verse 13, These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And so this is why this prophecy, and of course there's many others that you could bring into this, dozens of them in fact, probably up over a hundred prophecies, talking about this, this system, this church-state union, this final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire. You'll see, I mean, coming up in the next segment, we'll see how the Old Testament, I mean, we already see it with Daniel 2 and Revelation 17. And so Jesus said, watch these events. When you see these 10 kings coming together, when you see these 10 come together looking for a strong leader, beware, be ready, as I say. Make sure that you get this literature, the Holy Roman Empire and Prophecy, powerful, powerful book. Crucial information for you to understand and know. It really does explain so many of these prophecies for you. And then it, this, this, of course, just gives you the accurate forecast of Herbert Armstrong throughout the 20th century. 50 years of accurate forecasting. Stay tuned so that you can get the information you need to contact our operators and request your free literature today. We'll be right back. In a rapidly changing world, most observers say that Europe, divided and squabbling, is destined to remain a second-rate power. The Holy Roman Empire in prophecy forecasts a different future. If you want to grasp the true nature of the political religious project unfolding in Europe, and even to know Europe's future and how it will shape the world and impact every nation on earth, you need to read the Holy Roman Empire in Prophecy. Request your free copy today. Let me just take you through this quote that I uh, read to you in the first segment. Again, it says, this is from He Was Right, Who would have thought after the savagery of World War II that America and Germany would become allies? The United States established the Marshall Plan and on it goes. There's this strong alliance, but it says at the end, Biblical prophecy shows that this union was destined from the beginning, to end in ruin. That's what your Bible shows. That's what we're reviewing here on today's program. Now, look at current events. If you look at the campaign trail leading up to the U.S. presidential elections last November, you had the lead candidate. He's now president of the United States, Donald Trump. He was out talking about NATO being obsolete and, and threatening to withdraw the United States from the alliance. And he's pulled a little bit back from that since he uh, was inaugurated. But still, you see some of the, the contentions coming from both sides. All of this, this rhetoric, the speech that he gave uh, before NATO members on his trip through Europe back in the, uh, the month of May, telling them that they need to pay their fair share. They need to step it up. They need to shoulder more of the burden. And there's quite a few leaders in Europe that didn't like that. Here again, I'm not here to take sides. I'm just here to tell you the significance of these events. It's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about what's happening. It's about what's prophesied. It's about the reaction in Europe to that speech before NATO members. The German Chancellor coming out and saying, hey, we've got to go it alone here. We can't depend on old allies like Britain and the United States. That's basically what she was getting at. We've got to go forward and look out for ourselves, we in Europe. 
and Italy came out and said much the same. The alliance between Germany and France is getting stronger. They're, they're, going, they're preparing to go it alone. This alliance, in other words, this NATO alliance is beginning to break apart. That's what's happening. That's what's prophesied. Look at what the New York Times had to say. Chancellor Angela Merkel of uh, Germany, Europe's most influential leader, has concluded after three days of transatlantic meetings that the United States of President Trump is not the reliable partner her country and the continent have automatically depended on in the past. The New York Times says further, this is from May 29th, Clearly disappointed with Mr. Trump's positions on NATO, Russia, climate change, and trade, Ms. Merkel said in Munich on Sunday that traditional alliances were no longer as steadfast as they once were, and that Europe should pay more attention to its own interests and, quote, really take our fate into our own hands. I mean, these are seismic shifts in geopolitics and uh, the prophetic significance here. It's, it's pretty amazing. Carrying on, it says, Ms. Ms. Merkel's strong comments were a potentially seismic shift in transatlantic relations with the United States less willing to intervene overseas. Germany is becoming an increasingly dominant power in partnership with France. Now, what is this leading to? Let's notice in Matthew 24 what Jesus prophesied for the last days I mean, we've seen a lot of war on the continent of Europe down through history. And uh, that NATO alliance since the end of World War II did a lot to prevent war from happening again. But what happens if the United States breaks away from it? What happens when Britain uh, moves on, on out of uh, the European Union? Well, notice what Jesus prophesied. This is Matthew 24, verse 21. It says, For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Great tribulation is coming. Great tribulation, unlike anything this world has ever seen. And it says in verse 22 that unless God intervenes or cuts short those days, nobody would make it through. No flesh would be alive. What does that tell you about man and the way that he treats fellow man? What does that tell you about all of the weapons, the nuclear weapons, tens of thousands, at least 16,000 nuclear weapons on this earth? What does that tell you about those weapons? Well, it tells you a lot of them are going to be used, and that's been man's history. That has been man's history, but notice what it leads to. This is verse 29, immediately after the tribulation, of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. So here are the, the heavenly signs. And then verse 30 says, And then, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. See, it all leads right up to the spectacular return of Jesus Christ to this earth. He comes back to Jerusalem, to the Mount of Olives. Zechariah 14, an Old Testament prophecy brings this out. See, these two testaments, they fit together hand in hand. I told you about Daniel 2 and the ten toes, and then Revelation 17 and the, the ten kings. They perfectly complement one another, these prophecies in the Old Testament and the New. Jesus, as I said, he came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. It was a prophetic message at its core. It was about prophecy. It was about the future. It was about the establishment of God's kingdom on this earth. That's what all of these events, and some of these events, again, they're not, it's not the most pleasant topic to get into. The seventh and final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire, this unholy union between church and state, and leading to what, what Christ describes here in Matthew 24, great tribulation. But there is hope in the end. There is a positive outcome. It's brought out here in Matthew 24 and also, and also in Revelation 17. Let's just go back there. That's where we, where we were earlier. But let's see the outcome. Let's see how this, this prophecy concludes. I read to you about the, the ten kings. I read to you about the, the, the woman straddling the beast. 
And this beast power coming out of the bottomless pit, coming from underground to reemerge again. And it says in verse 13, they, they all give power, their power and strength to the beast. These ten that come together. But then notice verse 14. that says here, These shall make war with the Lamb. That's Jesus Christ. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. See, just like it says in Matthew 24, Revelation, this book of prophecy by the Apostle John, it fits right together with what Matthew wrote in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Here is the return of Jesus Christ. Jesus Himself taking matters into His own hands, intervening to save man. From himself. That's the hope. That's the hope in so many of these prophecies. The reality of Jesus Christ's return to this earth to understand all the events and the lead up to it. These two booklets, the Holy Roman Empire and Prophecy, he was right. Also the Trumpet Magazine. Make sure that you contact our operators today uh, and receive all of this free material. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time. <music>